Welcome back to Illuminating the Unseen. My name is Jamie Crumley. I am the research fellow at Old North Illuminated. Today, we will discuss the efforts of late 18th century and early 19th century Massachusetts men to urge indigenous peoples to convert to Christianity. I will also explain how that story connects to religious life here in the North End. In a previous video, I talked about a young indigenous woman named Elizabeth who was baptized here at the Old North Church in 1733. I told you that I would continue to track the history of indigenous peoples here in Boston into the late 18th century and the 19th century and let you know what I learned. Today, I want to make good on that promise by telling you about the Elliott family of Boston and their efforts to Christianize indigenous peoples in Massachusetts. Reverend Andrew Elliott and his son John were ordained congregational ministers. Both men served the New North Church, which is the congregational church here in Boston's North End during their career as ministers. Both men were passionate about ministering to indigenous peoples and converting them to Christianity. The Reverend John Elliott, a Boston-born minister who died in 1813, worked alongside his colleagues here in Boston to obtain funding to carry out this work. He was a founding member of the Society for Propagating the Gospel among the Indians and others in North America. The group was incorporated in Massachusetts in 1787, but functioned earlier than that without official state sanctioning. The membership pages revealed that the group's members included Massachusetts ministers, lawyers, and judges. The society continued into the 1930s, which allowed it to participate in the push to civilize indigenous people and newly emancipated black people after the Civil War. The society was founded by Congregationalists who were opposed to Anglican missionary work. Yet by the late 19th century, Anglican missionaries worked alongside missionaries of other Christian denominations to convert American Indians and newly emancipated black people. In a future video, I can discuss the society's late 19th and early 20th century work. You might be noticing a few unusual things about the Society for Propagating the Gospel already. In a previous video, I talked about a different Reverend John Elliott. That Reverend John Elliott was the famed English missionary to indigenous peoples here in Massachusetts. He did much of his work in Natick, the hometown of a mixed race woman named Beulah Speen, who wed her husband, Saul Rogers, a black enslaved man, here at Old North in 1767. However, the Reverend John Elliott I'm talking about today is a different minister with the same name. The group name Society for Propagating the Gospel might also feel familiar to you. In a previous video, I discussed a sermon that Reverend Timothy Cutler, Old North's first rector, made before a Church of England-sponsored group called the Society for the Propagation of the Gospel in Foreign Parts in 1754. The missionary zeal of two John Elliots and the two societies for propagating the gospel indicates that an 18th century desire to Christianize indigenous peoples was ecumenical, meaning that Christian groups worked together to make it happen. The Society for the Propagation of the Gospel in Foreign Parts, or the SPG, was the largest and most influential missionary organization in the British Atlantic world. The SPG sent Anglican clergy all over the Atlantic world. Their responsibility was to help bring the message of the Church of England into the Americas and set the stage for what would become the Protestant Episcopal Church in the United States. The SPG had two missions. They worked to return English people who had left the Church of England to Anglicanism. They also endeavored to convert Native American and Black enslaved people. In this context, the word convert means that they wanted to do more than change belief systems. For the SPG to convert people was to change how people lived and to convince them to conform to ways of life that the British Empire deemed virtuous. For Native peoples, converting meant ceding their rights to live freely on their sacred homelands and to practice their spirituality and culture in ways they saw fit. For enslaved Black people, converting meant ceding their right to have autonomy over their lives. Efforts to Christianize indigenous peoples began in the British Empire and other European empires. However, American-born men continued the work. Several white Massachusetts-born men formed the Society for Propagating the Gospel among the Indians and others in North America, so they could encourage indigenous peoples to conform to the white Christian, or settler to use a term that is more common in Native Studies, way of life. According to the Society for Propagating the Gospel among the Indians and others in North America's historical sketch, they first tried to form their group in 1762. 
They fundraised and received a charter from the colonial government. However, when they took their plan to England, it was refused. The British government feared the group would compete with the Anglican Church's SPG. Things changed in 1787 when gentlemen in Massachusetts received a notice from a group of men in Scotland. The Scottish men also wanted to convert Native Americans as part of their work to spread Christianity. According to the historical sketch, when society members learned about the Scottish group's efforts, they were, quote, ashamed that more solicitude for this object should be discovered by foreigners than themselves, end quote. Society members resumed their efforts to acquire funding to Christianize all of North America. They returned to their work with assistance from a substantive donation that they received from the estate of the late John Alford of Charlestown. Alford had been a professor at Harvard University. Upon receiving the money from Alford's estate, they felt that they had the resources to tend to what they called the best interest of the indigenous peoples of Massachusetts. How they determine these best interests is unknown. Their records provide no details that indicate that they discussed the needs of indigenous peoples with them before starting their efforts to Christianize them. Their records also do not reflect what kinds of social support, if any, indigenous peoples asked them to provide. The society stated that its primary goal was to, quote, civilize the natives, end quote. They believed that native peoples could not be converted if they maintained indigenous cultural practices. Therefore, the society purchased plows and hoes to encourage land cultivation. They also distributed instructional books and built schools. Throughout the 19th century, the Society for Propagating the Gospel among the Indians and others in North America continued its work. Group members also supported the work of other organizations that worked to convert and educate indigenous and black people in the United States. During the 19th century, missionary groups became less competitive across denominational lines. Episcopalians, Congregationalists, Presbyterians, and Baptists collaborated in their efforts to force indigenous and black people to conform to the American way. The records of the Massachusetts Society indicate that it encourages missionaries to avoid controversy with other missionaries and to work collaboratively with them when possible. When we think of the missionary work among indigenous peoples, we tend to focus on the missionaries who went west. The society's 18th century efforts demonstrate that Massachusetts men were among the earliest to begin missionary campaigns. Their efforts were local. The society was led by men, including Reverend John Elliott, the minister at the New North Church on Hanover Street in the North End, and Reverend Dr. Jeremy Belknap, Elliott's friend and correspondent, with whom he founded the Massachusetts Historical Society. Together, these men led these so-called civilizing efforts, which preceded the formation of American Indian boarding schools in the late 19th century. The purpose of the boarding schools was to take American Indian children away from their homes and cultures and forcibly assimilate them into mainstream or white American culture. In the schools, their teachers taught them new ways of dressing, styling themselves, speaking, cooking, and worshiping. Reverend John Elliott died in 1813. He worked with the society during its first 20 years in existence. He died at age 58 due to what North End burial records described as, quote, spasms of the heart, end quote. Even after its first generation of leaders died, the society continued its work. The society pooled its resources to spread Christianity and American cultural norms throughout North America. These missionary efforts intensified after the Civil War shifted the social hierarchy in the United States. There will be more on that in a future video. Please share your thoughts about the work of Reverend John Elliott and his collaborators in Boston did to Christianize local indigenous peoples as a comment below this video. You can see this video and others on our website by visiting www.oldnorth.com slash ITU. You may also contact me directly by emailing me at jcrumley at oldnorth.com.